I'm James Just, and welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. Tonight with me, I have Jason Quintaro and Mike Giles. Jason, let's start with you. New Jersey has hit Uber with a $650 million tax bill for misclassifying workers. Now, the Forbes wanted to frame this as a start against the war against the gig economy companies, but is it really a war on the gig economy worker? I think it's a war on the gig economy <laughs> worker. Um, we have too many laws, too many restrictions, and we have regulators who are trying to just fit their personal agenda or the government's agenda in here. They're not hurting the companies. The company's got money. Well, they're hurting the company, but where does that go? That in turn hurts the employees. I shouldn't say employees. Not even employees. It hurts the individuals that want to earn a living. And that's what really frustrates me. The people trying to earn a living. Let them earn a living. Um, yeah, I mean, the American dream was built by people working the way they like to work. Mm -hmm. Some people like to work 60-hour weeks and, you know, move up and become wealthy in L.A. or something, and other people like to work and enjoy life and love their kids, and they don't necessarily all have to do a 9 to 5, you know, get a paycheck from the boss. Gig workers is a whole different thing. Right. Yeah, this is another great example of um, how government makes um, our lives harder and not easier. And they need to step out of the way and let us live the way we want to live. Well, kind of in full disclosure, for those of you who have seen kind of point before, you know, so I am a, you know, one of these gig workers who's affected by this. I don't much drive for Uber anymore, but you know, it's not just Uber that these, that these kind of things are here affecting. Here in California, you know, I'm watching as the dominoes from AB5 are starting to fall, I'm watching people's lives get destroyed and they don't know what to do. We have you know, these single mothers who have special needs kids, and so they need a flexible work schedule, and so that, that is actually being taken away by people with, you know, who think that we're, they're being exploited by the fact that they are flexible work schedules. And it's this very strange, we live in this very strange time where we've got a bunch of people who are saying they're looking out for the interests of these gig workers, but they're not. The gig workers, we work this way for, we could be employees if we wanted to be. We're not incompetent. <laughs> you know, right. you, you have to know how, you have, you cannot be a successful gig worker and be incompetent. You can't. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we're, so we're, we're not being exploited. We're living life the way we want, but for whatever reason, they feel that, you know, their, their view of employment is the, the view that we all should have to be, you know, forced to live under. Yeah. Somebody who doesn't live your life is telling you how to live your life. They, they know <laughs> yeah. better how to live your life than you do. And that's insulting to the American public. Yeah. They just know how much smarter and better they are than you are. Right. And a, a variation of exactly what you were saying is I remember this furious smog shop owner speaking to us how the state, uh, uh, ha forced him to fire two workers that helped pregnant, I mean, um, single moms keep their beat up old cars rolling. If they just adjusted this and adjusted this and told them go do that. Uh, but the state wants them to be, their cars to be destroyed so they can't use them. Wow. So the single mother can walk. Um, and they actually sent somebody out to his shop to threaten them and he came up to them and walked around the car. The guy was afraid of him, so he, he walked around the car a few times and jumped in his car and drove away because he hurt his workers and he hurt the single moms that they were trying to serve because a lot of the smog shop customers were single moms trying to keep their old cars rolling. A long way of saying I agree with you 100%. <laughs> Well, yes, yeah, so it's like these people who say they're looking out for the interests of the little guy are actually the ones who are putting the screws to the little guy. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, and we've got another here story, a go-go grandparent. You know, they're a company that orders Uber dress, Uber livers for older, for elderly and blind people. You know, old people can get confused using smart apps and so, smartphones. And so go-go grandparent, they call them and go-go grandparent orders and, and does the lift for them. But apparently, California regulators thought that was a problem and tried to find this. Uh, tried to find the company ten thousand dollars for for providing the service without the proper permit. Oh. Yeah, oh. <laughs> they need a permit. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee, I can't believe it. So they they needed a permit to do what 
is just an honorable and good thing to do and then get paid a little bit for doing that, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I don't know who these people are. Um, I, I absolutely <laughs> don't know who the, these, these kind of people think they are. Uh, virtual signaling as they walk around in their thousand dollars worth of clothes inside their buildings full of bureaucrats. I mean, who who do they think they are? <laughs> yeah, it, it, and once again, is somebody's going to tell you how to live your life? And in this case, they're hurting people. They're absolutely hurting people. If this company, GoGo Grandparent, I never heard of it, but I like it already. But they're helping the blind and the elderly get rides. How, how do you? <laughs> How, how do you hate this? Why do you want to punish them? It's amazing. How do you want to punish these people? I, I, I don't get it. Yeah, well, shouldn't the government actually be going, hey, how can we make this company, how can we help this company be, provide their service? How can we actually help this company right. help people? Instead of, how do, we, how do we stop this company from doing this? Or they didn't fill out the paperwork properly, so we got to punish them. So they'll say, hey, they, these guys are actually providing a needed service. And how do we actually get out of their way? And yeah, that's why... The libertarian philosophy of less government works. We need less government because the government gets in the way. It absolutely hurts people. It doesn't lift people up. It's not helping people. It hurts people. And I'm angry about this. They want the cash. They want that permit money. And control. Uh, yeah. I mean, just like the this discussion that went on earlier today at a Sacramento Taxpayers Association meeting about how the city government of Sacramento, there's all these convolution things to just rob people of money and reduce service and get more money. I mean, and, and then paralyze people from even knowing what happened and how their money was taken. It's, it's very scientifically and artfully done inside these buildings full of bureaucrats, again, as I say. Mm -hmm. I'm really upset with this. And there, there's, there's gotta be something wrong yeah. Well, it's not, and it's not just this. Um, here in Sacramento, they've done a lot of, of work downtown trying to restrict traffic and make, make driving actually worse. You know, the, the kind of happy that the commut commuters now take the extra half hour. But, and so they're going to do more of it. But at the same time they're doing that, they're going to punish, they're going to find park, parking, let me see if I get this way, give parking tickets to people who park these e-scooters and e e and and e-bicycles <laughs> really? badly. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you pack parking really? badly around, they're going to, which, which is, you know, I thought you wanted people out of your cars, which would mean you want to make this kind of stuff as easy and as simple as possible and as convenient as possible, <laughs> rather than, okay, you've got to go put it in an approved bike rack. Well, which might be six blocks from your house, so now you've got to walk six blocks to get the scooter so you can go eight blocks to the grocery store real quick. It's all still, it's dumb. It's like they don't think what they really want. What do they really want? If you want people out of your cars, you have to make the alternatives efficient and cheap. And if you take away one of those, the efficient part, well, the people are just going to get back in their car. Right. It's, it, it's, sad. it's just one where they, it's like they don't understand what they really want. Well, I want to know who, who's pushing it. Who's pushing that agenda? You know, is Big Ten Issue pushing the no driving and no parking a scooter agenda? I mean, <laughs> Big Ten Issue. <laughs> Big Ten Issue. <laughs> Nike's coming down saying, I don't want this new law passed. I'll give you a million bucks. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's silly. Yeah, the whole, it's all, it's, you know, and you get it. There's some issues, right? People can leave scooters laying across a, a sidewalk, and so someone in a, in a mobility scooter will have an issue with that. But is the solution to that really to going around giving parking tickets to people on, on e-scooters and bicycles? I mean, you've got to think there's, you know, it, we've got to get out of this punishment society, this issue where everything we've solved, every problem is solved with punishment. And whether it's the go-go grandparents or the scooters or, you know, these people are working the way we don't like them, well, let's punish them. It, there's a... Well, I know how to fix the scooter problem. If you see a scooter blocking the sidewalk, pick it up and move it. That's how you solve that problem. Yeah. yeah. I don't need a police officer to come by and write a ticket. Yeah. You you know, know, or if it's in the way, you know, park it politely. You know, because there's no place to put it other than a sidewalk. Okay, but you could put it off to the side of the sidewalk so the rest of the sidewalk. You know, it's not like there's, our sidewalks are tiny little things that only have room for one person. Right. You know, there's, there's ways around these things. It, it, we, we, ah. Common sense, they used to call it. <laughs> you know, just, just use human decency and common sense. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> and... Uh, um, one um, kind of additional uh, fact, um, tangential, but very definitely part of all this, is uh, like I'm going to have to be driving down Watt Avenue, and luckily I know where a whole lot of the potholes are, so I can just automatically <laughs> move my car. But um, there's big pieces of loose um, 
asphalt bouncing out of all the holes mm -hmm. and uh, so then you hit that and then it flies sideways and you know hits somebody or hits another car or something so I mean they we have the highest gas tax in the nation or something close to it and yet the money is stolen by these people so that all but everybody can hit these potholes uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where, where's that money again where's that money going well it's going to yeah. reconfigure the streets downtown so traffic will be worse and hire a, hire a team to ticket 15 year olds who leave their scooter out yeah. right yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's, all, that's all we need more government workers yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> somebody has to do that job now uh, to, to get my more supervisors right exactly <laughs> more offices <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, it's, it's becoming a part where you know it's they want to inject themselves into literally every aspect of our lives and so it's becoming it's becoming almost difficult to kind of figure out how to live your life but this brings us up to another thing uh, Nebraska made it the first state to cooperate with the Trump administration's effort to gather data from the U.S. citizenships. Essentially what they're going to do is they're going to give all their voter registration data to the U.S. Census so the census can compare data somehow to make the census better. I don't actually understand why it's going to make the census better. It seems, to me, it seems like a, you know, kind of a right. big kerfluffle, a bunch of people gathering data for no reason. But, you know, maybe someone can explain this one to me that I don't understand. You know, I read a little bit on this, and I saw that, well, this is NPR, so God knows if it's true or not, but uh, they talked about, they're going to use this to, uh, to use um, redistricting, to find the right people for the right politician. That's what I'm reading. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to carve out just that little section so this politician can win that district, and that's why I'm reading about this. I don't like it. Well, like yeah, for me, I, I don't. The California census does that. <laughs> the census is supposed to be a head count, right? It's you, you don't need anything else. You count how many people are there, and that's kind of it. That's what the census is supposed to be for. It, we've turned the census into all this kind of marketing data, and uh, it's essentially about marketing data that they use. But oddly enough, by the time they get it all processed, it's outdated. Modern marketing information can get the same data much faster, much more reliable. It, there's, it's essentially no need for all that other stuff. The census should really get back to its original form and just count people. Well, what's scary is that yeah. the <laughs> census people could just ask Google and they'll have it like that, which I don't like. Yeah, as um, I, I agree. I, I think that uh, I, I read on this thing too on, about Nebraska. Um, um, just tangentially, I, I heard an FBI agent speaking about um, the United States and different countries, and she said that um, the Chinese government is so deeply penetrated, they know the identity of every single, from kindergarten all the way through graduate school, the name, identity, location of, everything about every student in the entire United States. Mm -hmm. So if the Chinese can do it from all that far distance, I'm sure we could figure a way to do Well, if the Chinese have it, where'd they get it from? They stole, probably stole it from our own government. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, they, they penetrated. We only have 10,000 to defend. They have 500,000 to attack. So they can penetrate just about anything they want. But uh, yeah, I, I think the state of um, Nebraska has everybody identified extremely well uh, from what I read in that report. So the census can just, it just cleans up and makes it smoother and easier, I guess. Um, whereas there's all sorts of other states that have a mess. You know, they, they have people that aren't registered here and they're illegal aliens there and they're, you know, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> in jail or whatever. But Nebraska seems to have smoothed it out. And I don't know, maybe that's why. I, I don't know enough about it. <coughs> well, apparently it's, a, some, it's some law that we're, all the states are supposed to comply with, so maybe it's just that Nebraska was the first one who was able to comply, it, you know, able to actually go through the compliance. But I am not, uh, personally, I'm not happy. I don't see there's no need for states to be sharing this kind of data with the census when the census is just supposed to count people. Okay, well, I think you hit right on the head when you said marketing. It's marketing data. That's what it feels like to me. You know, how many Republicans, Democrats, or Libertarians do I have in this district? I want to know. I want the data on this. I want to use it somehow. That's what I feel is going on. Yeah, I suppose they have uh, late night meetings in the back rooms of um, big buildings or fancy restaurants, and they all look at all these maps and figure out, you know, well, you can take this area and we'll move it over a little bit to make it easier for you. And then 
I'll take this area and then I'll take out a little bit more over here to make it easier for me to get reelected mm -hmm. and all this kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, I mean, redistricting. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Rather than just say, here's the center of the city, you draw a circle around it, and there's your district. Yeah, I wish it was. <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> represent, represent them. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's Let the tips fall where they may. Right. Yeah. I mean, in California, some of our districts are shaped like a giant worm. You know, yeah. Oh, they're, they're terrible. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're absolutely well. Well, it's spark about you know about national trends and what. Right? Virginia has seen a trend towards homeschooling. I think it was 12% growth in homeschooling in the last year. And, and my perception is that this trend is actually growing nationwide. I, wasn't, I didn't have time to look for the data on it, but my perception is that this is a nationwide trend in the last few years where homeschooling has increased. I mean, is, is it a nationwide trend and do we understand why? I mean, Mike, I know you're an educator, or, <laughs> so you know, maybe you have some insight on this one for us. Well, I, I have seen, um, two different developments. I've seen a, a vast degradation because when uh, I went to high school and to varying degrees when you guys went to high school, California at one time had um, student test scores that uh, were first in the nation. When I went, when I graduated high school, sometimes Connecticut, sometimes New York, but basically most of the time right up there. Now California student test scores as a state average, not our local schools around here much, a couple of them, yes, a state average 47th in the nation and the undisputed worst in teaching history and civics in the nation. We are like like 51st or 52nd even in, with only 50 states. Um, it's ours teaching hi um, history and physics, I mean history and civics. So parents are becoming alarmed over a period of years and um, a giant, it's a step wildly sideways, but I heard some people uh, jumping up and down for joy. They were brought to some place, I think it was called the John Adams Academy, and I'm not sure exactly where it is, Folsom or somewhere, and they were escorted to a third grade classroom and upon entry, the teacher just gave them a signal. All the kids stood up and recited the Declaration of Independence. Third graders. I couldn't recite the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, not even <laughs> you know, and I've read the thing. So it's a, you know, I, it's just, you know, is this, I mean, you've got um, you're a parent of ch school age children, and I think you're a coach if, if uh, memory serves. So so what have you been seeing on from your side? Well, from what I see is that I, I'm actually very satisfied with my school system. I live in Vacaville, and my kids have gone to a private school for a while until I can't afford it no more. And then uh, well, they went to, to a public school, and actually our public school is pretty good. I'm mm -hmm. satisfied, I, but, but mm -hmm. I, I, I do engage. I talk to the teachers. I get to know the, the cheer coach, and, you know, I like to engage with the, um, the teachers. And I think they're doing a good job, but I also make sure I focus and see what, what what are you doing kids what's your homework today what's going on so i'm satisfied but i have friends who are not i have a friend of mine uh, her name is minette and she talked to some of her friends who homeschool and she said that her kids or their kids are more in tune with the parents or the parents are more in tune with the kids education so some parents just want to be more in tune with their children so if that's their desire if that if that's their wish then let them do it you know, I, I, I see why you might want to do that. I feel like I'm okay with my kids. They're good. But other parents have different ideas, different choices. Yeah, I mean, I was speaking of a statewide average. Um, mm -hmm. I personally know teachers who any parent on earth would cherish their student being taught by that teacher yeah. because that teacher cares. <clears throat> Doesn't matter whether they're men or women or Republicans or Democrats, they care and they work hard, well, deeply caring. Well, let me ask you this, Mike. So what, from what I have seen is that there are some public school teachers who are pushing an, an agenda now. I am hearing this. My kids are coming home telling me about this agenda that the teacher is pushing. I tell them how to push back. You know, I, I yeah. tell them, your teacher's wrong, so don't listen to them on this topic. What was it like when you were teaching? Um, <clears throat> yeah, there, uh, there, uh, there's some horrific things that I, I'm not sure we can bring up here, uh, but um, 
uh, some really, really terrible things, but there's some agenda-driven stuff that is extremely um, bad, um, like certain uh, teachers, without realizing it, um, kind of uh, are making, like all throughout my college career, it was the same way. A whole lot of room was given to Stalin, who mass murdered roughly 50 million people to the point where they had to buy caterpillar tractors because if you're going to bury a 10,000 person village, every man, woman, boy, girl and baby, you need a reliable tractor to <clears throat> dig a deep trench to throw all the bodies in and cover it up. The Soviet tractors weren't reliable. They were bad tractors, yeah. so they had to buy American tractors to murder all those people. And the teacher wanted to push a pro-Soviet <coughs> agenda, a pro-Stalin yeah, agenda. Yeah, yeah. To um, children. And um, it's, 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 they're, they're doing it kind of unconsciously, I think. But they, everybody blames Hitler. Uh, in fact, one co girl came up to me, I was subbing in this class, and uh, I mentioned, you know, there was some, everything was about how bad Hitler was, and I just mentioned, um, Stalin murdered 50 million people, not just 10. Mao Tse Tung murdered roughly 90 million people. And Pol Pot murdered one half the entire nation of Cambodia. Um, so uh, what happened is they, uh, the girl rushed up to me and she said, thank you, we've been Hitler to death. You know, we don't like to hear all this horrible stuff, but we've been Hitler to death. Now we know a little bit wider range. Okay. Yeah, I mean, and, and let's just think about Hitler. How much can you actually teach? Okay, you know, we all know the Nazis and, and Hitler and all this were, were bad, but, you know, how many times do we actually need to be told? I think if, if I was homeschooling my kids, we would go over that and we'd move on. We wouldn't talk about it every single year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean. You go through it, you teach it during, you, you, when you teaching the war, you're teaching, you know, you're teaching various political things, you, you, you touch these things, but it seems to me like we've gone, it's, we got a virtue signal, or, or, you know, to use the term of the day, virtue signal that we hate Nazis. Well, yeah, we hate Nazis. Fine. got it. Right, <laughs> Nobody, I get it. Yes. Yeah, good. The National Socialist German Workers Party, yeah, we got it. We, we, yeah. we don't like them, yeah, we hate Nazis, and real, when real Nazis show up, we'll take care of them, but, you know, most of the people we call Nazis today aren't really Nazis. Right. And, That's just someone you disagree with on that day. Yeah, it's just, yeah, we've kind of got, it's, and you go back to this homeschooling thing a little bit. Um, from my own perspective, as someone who did not, I, the, the traditional schooling environment did not suit me well, and it did not suit one of my children well. And so for me, I look at this homeschooling trend and I go, it under, makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. you got some people mm -hmm. who go, you know, that environment doesn't, doesn't fit for that child, so I want to educate my child the best environment I can create for them. Now, mm -hmm. maybe, a, maybe a, you know, a small independent school might be better than a homeschooling for that child, but they don't have the money or the access to it, so their homeschooling is the best, best option. But it's a better option than, than the public school where it would create an you know, for me, it was an anxiety disorder. It, it was kind of, and so I, you couldn't camp, you know, I couldn't deal with school. Yeah. And a, at least a large school. A smaller school, I probably could have, would have been better off at. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a large school with, you know, 1,500, 2,000 students, it was too big for me. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of kids like that who are, who are like me or who just can't function as well in that environment. And so they're better off at a home school or a small school environment. And, and our public schools don't seem to be responsive to that type of need. Yeah, well, public schools are meant to be, or they're trying to be, a one-size-fits-all. Yeah. But that one size does not fit all. So I would like to see uh, the government, United States, California, just allow people to homeschool. I know there's a lot of pushback, government pushback against homeschool, which is frustrating because, you know, let people thrive. Let parents decide what their children need. Well, you've got to understand they don't care. I, they don't. They don't want you no. to thrive. They well, Elizabeth Warren is now attacking charter schools. She's psycho. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. That, that one was nuts. She's attacking um, charter schools. You said you want to remove what little choice out of public schools people have. It, it, yeah, she obviously doesn't give a damn about children or the parents. That's all I have to say about her. Yeah, I, I mean, and I just want to repeat how there's just some teachers I know that are just so caring. 
The and, assignment is uh, we're not attacking teachers. I want to make sure we're yeah, all clear. Yeah, right. The I, I average know, teacher is a hardworking person who does the best they can under under yeah. difficult situations, and, you know, with with administrations who aren't supportive. And you know, my kids have some great teachers. And, I love them. And politicians who'd rather impo impose their politics, and they're just trying to do the best job they can. So right. the average teacher is just trying to do the best job we can. And so I think we all want to make sure we're all clear that we're yeah. nobody's here is, is attacking teachers. Teacher, yeah, uh, not not at all. Not at all. It's but this whole system. It seems like the system is more important than the teachers or the students. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, these these teachers are fighting to teach. They're actually limited by the system. The system is diminishing well, their the abilities. Yeah, right. And the administrators are even part of a bigger problem that's all pushing everybody down a little bit. I mean, these teachers, uh, like this one drama teacher, stays after school, has food for the kids so they can practice after school. I mean, like she's a caring, 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 caring teacher, but she can't stop some of these things that are going on um, that diminish the kids' ability to learn because there's a whole bunch of teachers, otherwise teachers also, that don't care. They just run their classroom like an autocratic. Get their paycheck and move on, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, we've got a couple minutes left, so let's cover, well, I want to cover at least one thing. Um, the U.S. Senate passed a, the Human Rights Bill for Hong Kong, supporting the Hong Kong protesters. Uh, I want to make sure we get this covered today. So what's your, what's your <coughs> thoughts on, on the Hong Kong protests in the Senate uh, angering Beijing? Because Beijing is now angry at the U.S. Senate. Fine. Good job, Senate. Good. You, know, <laughs> you spoke up. You said that oppression is bad. Yes. <laughs> yes. Great. You know, um, fantastic. Now what? You know, now what? Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you're, if you're not getting somebody mad at you, you're not really doing anything. That's right. Um, yeah. So... Uh, Beijing is a mass murderous, vicious, hateful Communist government, country, yeah. and they're doing horrible things to uh, the Uyghurs. I think they're called the the a big Uyghurs, one, uh, the, the Muslims. Yeah, the Muslims in the and um, I said Uyghurs. Just yeah, be very clear. Yeah, I, I don't know if I say it right, but anyway, uh, they're they're just being brutalized, just just like in Hitler's concentration mm -hmm. camps. So I don't care. They took, yeah, I'm happy Beijing is Yeah, mad. I'm, I'm mad. happy. I'm glad they're mad. I'm fine. Whatever. I don't need them. The people of Hong Kong have more, you know what, than just oh, about yeah. every American politician, you know. Yeah, well, they're out there, the people out there in Hong Kong are reciting, they're, they're again reciting the Constitution, and they're, and they're doing all this. So, so the people of Hong Kong, you know, we thank the people of Hong Kong, just like we thank, thank the you people of you, you guys, for watching tonight. Um, for those of us at Counter uh, Libertarian Counterpoint, thank you for thank you for watching, and thank you. And please remember to love everybody. And you can catch us on our website, libertariancounterpoint.com, and Facebook, and YouTube, and Access Sacramento channel 17. Okay, chapter 17. I remember what channel it was on. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. That's good. <laughs>